everybody, and recently I've been having a little bit of a tinker around with... Knack. Mm. So can I please get an intro? Knack! So, Knack. The most unremarkable name for anything that I've ever seen before in my life. If you couldn't tell, I did recently get the PS4, and currently I'm personally having a blast with it, and I would make a video about it, but if I was going to make a video about it, it would go on the second channel. So I'm going to make this really easy for you and put the link to the channel in the description so you can have a look at it and see all the other exclusive shit that goes on down there because I can't really fit everything onto this channel. Anyway, out of all of the PS4 bundles that interested me, I went with the one that was the action platformer made with Mark Cerny. So essentially, I bypassed all of the FIFAs and all of the kill zones and all of the more, eh, looking titles, and went with something that was promising a fantastic, traditional, back-to-basics, Sony-exclusive character action platformer in the wake of Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, Jack and Daxter, and Ratchet and Clank. However, what I got wasn't perfect, and I think a lot of people can agree with me on that. Despite that, however, do I think that this is one of the worst games of 2013, like some people have been saying? Not at all! Before I start talking about this game, though, I should say that in this video, whenever I say the word platformer, I'm more referring to character platformers in the wake of, like, Spyro and Ratchet and Clank, and not like your Uncharted and Tomb Raider kind of stuff. Also, I'll be doing this Tinker Time a little bit different than all of my usual other Tinker Times, because instead I'll be covering all of the things that I didn't like about the game before all the things that I did like. Why is that? Honestly, I just wanted to get my dislikes for this game crystal clear straight away, just so that when I say that this game here isn't that awful, all of you can have some sort of understanding that I do get why some people didn't like this, in fact lots of people didn't like this, and I'm on some sort of similar sane ground as everyone and not completely fucking delusional, because honestly, there is a fair bit wrong with this game. And I'll start with my main problem. After the game's release and all of the lukewarm critical reception, the developers of the game and Sony came straight out and explained that this game was supposed to be just a simple and fun launch title to break up the stale, serious tones of all of the FPS launch titles. And you know what? Good for them. I back them all the way. But what is wrong with that? Because this statement is hideously confused. This game cannot fucking decide whether or not it wants to be a simple Crash Bandicoot styled linear platformer that any kid could pick up and play, or a toned down God of War style action game that even grown men can't play. It's an extremely misguided game, trying to incorporate everything into one to appeal to everybody and then tweak it up ready for the next gen and it seriously doesn't work in its favour sometimes. I mean, you control Knack, the hero of the tale, who can run, jump, climb, dodge, fight with basic combos and special abilities. He navigates through a series of linear areas, avoiding all sorts of environmental hazards, like when you get to the ice caves, you have the ice and the snow you have to get around, and then in the jungles you have all of the traps set by the goblins and all that stuff, and he can upgrade his body, and he picks off bad guys one by one, and you throw some boss levels in. Sounds pretty basic, doesn't it? But unfortunately, it's not quite so. The difficulty of this game is the main issue. I only played this game on normal mode and I ended up nearly throwing the controller at the TV numerous times. No matter how adapted to the controls and the fight style you get, no matter how many different types of enemies you encounter and defeat, no matter how far you progress into the game, no matter how big Knack gets in some levels, you will sometimes feel very underpowered. And when people started complaining about how spaced out the checkpoints are, in reality, they actually aren't that far apart. But here's the thing, Dying at a very hard part of the game, only to then replay the same bits before that part over and over and over again and fighting the same enemies and gradually getting worse at those bits, only to then arrive at the bit that you died at the first time and then die again because you had no time to figure out what it was that you did wrong the first time to only then go back and repeat the exact same process over and over again can get very disheartening. And that's what gives your mind the impression that all the checkpoints are really far spaced out. And occasionally this game sometimes isn't even that fair. Some enemies deal too much damage and attack far too quickly, almost to the point of instantly killing you in one hit. So, you know, no matter how big Nat gets, or no matter how much extra health you have and how big your health bar is, you can still die in one hit, and then you'll wonder why the hell you have a health bar in the first place. And in the later stages of the game, I swear to God that the dodging just sometimes just doesn't work, and it's not even nearly as quick or effective enough to avoid all of these one-hit kill threats. But everything that I just mentioned before combines together to create 
create this artificial elongation. And most of the length of the game is basically devoted to you learning the grips of all of the controls and the enemy types and how they attack and how you can attack them and just replaying the same sections. So you know, it's hard to sometimes get the knack of knack. If you ask me for what it is, it just does not use the PS4 to its full advantage, and instead it just tr it tries to appeal to everyone far too much, and it tries to attract kids because it looks like a kid's game, it looks like a kid-friendly Spyro and Crash Bandicoot-esque game, and it certainly does sometimes feel like that, but then it can also very quickly swoop into adult gaming difficulties that is really easy to pick up, but incredibly difficult to master. But now I must talk about what I liked about this game, because personally I think that some people were far too harsh on this game, and I honestly think, in my eyes, that there is a lot to like here. People have often slanted this game for how linear it is as a whole, but for me, I wasn't actually that bothered. It felt like Crash Bandicoot, and I love that. But I won't just outright lie and say that it's actually that great, because honestly it is a huge shame. And why is it a huge shame? Because of how great this game looks. If you ask me, for a next-gen console game, it's lavishly gorgeous. And the guys behind it did a fantastic job of creating a luscious and greatly realised world with this awesome, cool, rounded and poppy sort of friendly art style with a really relaxing and welcoming vibe to it. It also feels next-gen for how it plays, which is stupendously. For me, the game never lagged no matter how much shit there was on the screen, there were no loading screens during gameplay, skipping cutscenes was instantaneous, and it was just all smooth and as fast as butter going down a, a, something fast. Also, I really fucking liked Knack himself. What a badass. I loved the concept he was given with that ball of energy that attracted, bonded and snapped together all of these different materials and relics to make his body increase to giant proportions. I loved all of the new, do, like all the different abilities that he could make himself do out of all of this. I loved how he constantly shifted and adapted to every situation like a living Katamari ball. And I loved his design and how he can look like an unlikely hero to an unstoppable badass and I assume especially loved his fucking voice. Honestly, he's simply cool, and that's that. Not to mention, I must say that Knack is absolutely joyous to control. Running, jumping, punching, dodging, and sipping about is just perfectly punchy. The pacing and the speed of the control, the tight, light, springy, bouncy responsiveness, the simplicity of it all. I mean, you only use a few buttons to control him overall. Just everything. Loved it. It was an absolute pleasure to control him, and it was a pleasure that took me right back to my nostalgic roots of Crash Bandicoot run and jumping. Talking of simplicity, I love that idea! You have one punching combo, no camera control, no shoulder button usage, three special moves, jumping and jump attacking, and right stick dodging, and that's it. I've been waiting for a game this giddily simple for years. And to pick it up and not feel any pressure learning any stupid overly extensive controls for a game like this was just incredibly refreshing for me. And then what I really loved was the splicing of these controls into the satisfaction of the gameplay. Again, it's my opinion, loads of people disagree with me, yes I know, but you're watching my video, it's my opinion, okay, so... Okay. And like I said earlier, yes, it can be extremely, excruciatingly frustrating on occasion. And the entire game as a whole can actually be seen as very narrow, shallow and bland. I mean, all you do is navigate a series of straight paths and fight things. However, did I enjoy the navigation and the fighting? Yes, I bloody did! It's more satisfying than it is frustrating, thank God. And learning all of the specific new enemy types that attack you, finding their weak spots and then locking them into a quick dashing combo that they can't do anything about until they explode into a million pieces, and then successfully dodging any attacks that they can counter at you, for me, personally, never got stale. Especially with the huge variety of all the different enemies that can keep you on your toes. And even though the game is like this most of the time and very on the edge, you can't simply just rush in to any fight prematurely and fists are blazing because otherwise you will die. So the element of carefully and yet quickly picking which enemies you can pick off and what they do and how they can work with each other and dissecting how they can attack you and how you can attack them back and have them all work to your advantage, it was it was really it was I loved it anyway. It was just it was really really addicting and that's the key word addicting. And the boss battles rocked as well. I really enjoyed it. It's incredibly fast paced, it's straight to the point and it's really actually it does 
does force you to keep completely and utterly engaged with it, and it fills your adrenaline up throughout the whole game. And after all that hard effort and work, you're then awarded with these much easier sections where Knack becomes a gigantamongous monster and can just crush everything Godzilla style. Also, if things do get too hard, there are all of these breakable walls throughout all of the stages that hide all of these special little cards, which are little, basically, they're pieces for gadgets. And when you find all the cards to complete a set, you get a new gadget, which then helps you out with your gameplay. And I heard so many people complain about the story and the characters for this game. But honest to God, if you're going to complain about that, you might as well complain about all the fucking 2D Mario platforming games, and all of the Crash games, the early ones anyway, and all of the Spyro games, the originals as well, because they're all equally as silly. They're not deep because that's the kind of game that they are. The story is very silly and yet very charming, the characters are very easygoing and very cheesy, and this game has, it even has knack quoting one-liners. Yes! For me, this made the whole game feel like one of those awesome Saturday morning cartoon shows like incarnate into a game, much like all of the other character platformers in its wake. I love that they took this writing and stylistic decision myself, and it uprooted a truly innocent and childlike wondrous part of me that I hadn't experienced for years, probably since 2007 with Ratchet and Clank Tools of Destruction. And when I booted this game up and had a bash with it, it immediately flashbacked me to the first time I picked up Crash Bandicoot 3, and it felt like I was playing this game on a Christmas morning. I can't honestly explain it, it's like child nostalgia, it's, it, 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 it's everything, it's completely everything. It's something that some people are going to get and some people aren't, and that's a shame if you don't, but I personally got it. And it just filled me with so much childlike giddy excitement. Finally, yes, I know this isn't really worth a PS4 next-gen staple, and this could have easily been made on the PS3, but as a game in itself, I liked this. As most of you could probably guess, I am a very busy guy. Being only one man and fitting all of these weekly uploads that I do for you guys into the schedule of my life can get very, very mentally taxing sometimes, as I'm sure you can imagine. And because of this, sometimes, when I do get a second to play a game, I don't want something mind-blowingly deep, complex, stressful, long, and super serious. Sometimes a quick, simple, fucking fun, easy to get into, yet challenging and satisfying game ticks all the right boxes for whatever's going on in my life at the time. And in my opinion, this game captures that pretty well. But that's just me. Anyway, after having a tinker around with little Knack over here, I would have to say that I would give this game a high-end acceptable. As a throwback to classic PlayStation platformers straight from the mind of the man that worked extensively close with Naughty Dog and Insomniac, this game does its job fairly well. But as a fully completed, fully retail priced game, which I got for a discount with the bundle anyway, so for me it wasn't actually that bad, the flaws for this game just really do hold it the fuck back. Like, a fair bit actually. Does it feel like I'm in the next gen yet? Well, it certainly looks and plays promisingly enough to keep my personal mind and my like childlike illusion intact. But honestly, with games like Ratchet and Clank Tours of Destruction on the PS3, Sony are going to have to try much harder than this game to capture that genuine, raw and perfect next-gen character platformer. One that can give a system as powerful and sexy and deserving as the PS4 its own headlining mascot, like in the old days. And one that could perfectly encapsulate what made PS exclusive character platformers truly special and worth owning the systems alone. Farewell everybody and until next time, take care.